Well, we're here, folks. We made it. Mortgage rates are over 6%. Jerome Powell announced last week that the Fed's raised interest rates three quarters of a percentage point, and now panic has set in. No need to panic. I'm going to tell you today what this means exactly for home buyers and home sellers. I'm going to be reading through an article to explain to you exactly what happened, why the Fed's raised those rates, how it's affecting the mortgage rates, and what you can consider doing to help save on those interest rates. All right, so let's get started. Last week, it felt like it was insanity when the Fed's announced the interest rates going up to three quarters of a percentage point. Oh my God, we thought the world was ending. Everybody was panicked. Buyers, sellers, everyone's freaking out. Pump the brakes. Let's not freak out. Let me break this down for you right now and explain to you exactly what happened, why it happened, and what we can do moving forward. All right, so I have this article here from Bankrate. The article states here what the Fed's June rate hike means for home buyers and sellers. So it says here, in an effort... To rein in raging inflation, the Federal Reserve boosted interest rates in early May. It raised them even more in June by three quarters of a percentage point, the largest Fed rate hike since 1994. This is why everybody's freaking out. (laughs) It's been a long time since this has happened. And yeah, it needed to happen, guys. The hike is designed to cool an economy that has been on fire since rebounding from the coronavirus recession of 2020. That dramatic recovery has included a red-hot housing market characterized by record-high home prices and microscopic levels of inventory. Yep, it's been our lives for the past two years, and I'm kind of glad that's slowing down because I would love to go back to a normal market. Wouldn't that be just, wouldn't that be awesome? I'd just love to go back to the days before the pandemic. Oh my God. Now it goes on to say here, home prices are driven not just by interest rates, but by a complicated mix of factors. So it's hard to predict exactly how the Fed's new direction will affect the housing market. In the short term, higher rates are challenging for both home buyers who have to cope with steeper monthly payments and sellers who could experience less demand for their homes. So this is what people are scared about now. And and I get it. Look, inflation's out of control. The home prices are out of control. So now you're tacking on a higher interest rate. I totally get the panic. I see it and I understand it. But is it the end of the world? I don't think it's the end of the world. I mean, if you saw my video last week where I tell you it's still a good time to buy a house, it's still a good time to buy a house, guys. So let me go on further with this article. How the Fed affects mortgage rates. The Federal Reserve does not set mortgage rates and the central bank's decisions don't move mortgages as directly as they do other products like savings accounts and CD rates. Instead, mortgage rates tend to move in lockstep with 10-year treasury yields. So you see this. The feds don't control the mortgage rates, and there's confusion about there. Everyone thinks that the feds control that. They don't. It says here, the Fed does set the overall tone for mortgage rates. Mortgage lenders and investors closely watch the central bank and the mortgage market's attempts to interpret the Fed's actions affect how much you pay for your home loan. That's what's affecting the mortgage rates, guys. It's the tone of this and all these other factors that that the banks look at and determine what the rates are going to be. It goes on here to say the June rate hike was the third of what could be seven bumps in 2022. Yeah, there could be four more increases between now and December. Now, how do mortgage rates affect housing demand? There's no doubt that the record low mortgage rates helped fuel the housing boom of 2020 and 2021. Some think it was the single most important factor in the housing boom. Yeah, I agree. I think what everyone's experiencing right now is a little bit of sticker shock. I know people who got their rates, you know, well below 4%. Some were even in the high twos. Oh my God, that had never happened before. I couldn't believe what some people were getting for their interest rates. And now they're at, you know, 6.28%. Yeah, it's a sticker shock, guys. It is. And that's what's affecting everybody right now. It's nobody thought this jump was going to happen this quickly. And it is affecting the demand. And we're already seeing it. I'm seeing it in my area. Area. Houses are sitting on the market longer. I mean, honestly, like we would list a house and if you're not getting an offer right now in the first like five days, you start to wonder like, oh God, what's wrong? That's what's happening. But you know what? 
that's how it was before pandemic. That's what a normal market was like. It took a couple of months for a house to sell. So we have been so accustomed to what's gone on the past two years, where as soon as you get a house on the market, offers just flooded in and you were choosing between multiple offers and you're, you're, the prices were going way over asking. So the Fed's doing this and they're kind of slowing the housing boom down. I think, you know, it's not a bad thing. And at 6% right now, it's not horrible. I paid 6% when I first bought my house back in 1998. It's not horrible. We're just in sticker shock right now. <laughs> because interest rates were a flipping bargain for the last two years. Now, even though the rising rates do affect demand, homes are still going to sell. So this article goes on to say, in the 1980s, mortgage rates soared as high as 18%, yet Americans still bought homes. In the 1990s, rates of 8% to 9% were common and Americans continued snapping up homes. During the housing bubble of 2004 to 2007, mortgage rates were higher than they are today, and prices soared. Home prices and home sales tend to be resilient to rising mortgage rates, housing economists say. That's because of life events that happen, right? You have a baby, you got a job transfer, you get married, you need a house. That stuff's still gonna go on and people are still gonna need a house. So the chief economist, Sam Cater, um, he's the chief economist of, of the mortgage giant, Freddie Mac. He says the Federal Reserve raising short-term rates and signaling further increases means mortgage rates should continue to rise over the course of the year. While home purchase demand has moderated, it remains competitive due to low existing inventory, suggesting high house price pressures will continue during the spring home buying season. The National Association of Realtors say the housing squeeze is easing ever so slightly. The inventory of homes for sale inched up to a two-month supply in March compared to a record low of 1.6-month supply in January. The housing market is starting to feel the impact of sharply rising mortgage rates and higher inflation taking a hit on the purchasing power. Still, homes are selling rapidly and home price gains remain in the double digits. Now, it is, it is, but... I, I will also tell you, not only am I seeing, you know, things slow down here in Northern New Jersey, I'm seeing houses sit on the market longer. I have clients that I've been working with and we put two offers on two homes in the past couple of weeks. And guess what? We're still getting multiple offers because the price point, that price point is like in the mid threes, right? So the lower price points, I think you're still going to have some competition there. If you're, that's your price range, just be prepared. I think for the short term, the, maybe the rest of the summer, you're still going to be competing and you're probably going to be up against multiple offers. Not as many as we saw in March, in February, where it was just out of control, like, you know, 30, 40 offers, just, it's not that maybe, you know, three, four offers. So we are seeing the multiple offers, but not as many as back then. So that's a good sign. What are the next steps for those who are still in the market? They need to get a house and the rates are 6.28%. They could be going higher. What do you do? Keep in mind, prices are still going to continue to rise. Not as crazy. Prices are going to come down in the short term. Eventually, they are going to start to increase again. So if you watched my video last week, I did get a lot of flack. People were, thought it was nuts where I said it's still a good time to buy. It is still a good time to buy. And this is why, because prices are eventually going to go back up again. And if you're still waiting for the market crash to happen, you're going to be waiting a really long time because it's not crashing. I'm going to say that. I think I'm going to have that on my, my, my tombstone when I'm dead. The market's not crashing. <laughs> so for those of you who are still in the market and need to buy a house, here's what you should be doing. Shop the mortgage rates out. Do your due diligence. Talk to different banks. Talk to different mortgage lenders or brokers. Just go out there and shop the rates. And also be careful if you see these online lenders that are giving these, like you see a really low rate and you think, oh my God, I'm going with them. I'm going to get this like super low rate at like five and a half percent. Read the fine print. I've seen this happen to people before where they, they go with these lenders, they're going to get this rate. And then when they dig deeper into their finances, or if they see that their credit isn't as stellar, guess what? They end up paying a higher rate. So be careful of those teaser rates that you see online to get to draw you in, to get you to go with that lender. Do your research, read the fine print. Now, another option you have, a lot of people don't like doing it, but if you do want to save money on your interest rate, you can buy points. Now, what are points? Points are just, it's a discount on the rate, but you have to pay a fee to the lender up front. 
And that fee is 1% of the amount that you're borrowing on your loan. So if you're borrowing $250,000, you're going to pay the lender $2,500 for one point to lower that interest rate. Now, if you're going to be in the house long term, that upfront cost will probably be worth it for you to get that savings over time to have that lower rate. That is something you can do. Talk to your lender about it and just do the math do your research, due diligence, all that fun stuff. Make sure that that will work for you. Another thing I've been telling you all, if you've been sitting on the sidelines, keep socking away your money for your down payment. And also if you have any credit card debt, any student loans, anything like that, pay it off. Pay it off. You have to get rid of your debt because the higher your credit is and the more money you put down, guess what? you're going to get a better interest rate. Truth. You are. So if you have debt sitting out there right now, I highly recommend you cleaning it up, get rid of it and increase your credit score. Now, one thing I will also tell you, it's recommended now to stay away from the adjustable rate mortgages. Now you recall, I did several weeks ago, maybe it was a month now, I did a video about, look at it over here, about ARM loans or adjustable rate mortgages. It's being advised not to go with those loans. There isn't that much of a difference in interest rate from an uh, ARM loan to a 30-year fixed rate. There isn't. The risk with the ARM loans is that you're going to have a lower rate for just a short period of time, five, seven, 10 years. And then once you're at the end of that term, if you don't remember to refinance, all of a sudden your mortgage is going to be like, it's going to skyrocket overnight because it's going to adjust to whatever that current rate is. And then it's going to readjust itself every six months to a year. Again, if you want to learn more about the arm loans, go check this video out right over here. Now, if you're selling, what does this mean for home sellers? Sellers are now panicked too. Like, oh my God, the, now this is going to kill the demand. I'm not going to get the money that I thought I was going to get. Here's my one piece of advice. Don't get greedy because the ship has sailed with prices going like tens of thousands of dollars over asking price. It is not happening. Your real estate agent is going to be looking at comps, but the problem is now we can't go back six months. We can't even go back three months to look at what's sold because the market has shifted so much. And even in those three months, we have to look at the most recent sales that have closed. Like I would say within the last couple of weeks to see what they're selling for. Like it's almost, we have to look at real time now to see what the homes are selling for to get an accurate list price for your home. So don't get greedy because if you overprice that home, how many times have I said this too broken record i feel like a broken record <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you overprice at home it's going to sit you're gonna have to do price reductions and then you're gonna end up getting low ball offers and you're you're really gonna be setting yourself up for failure listen to your real estate agent you know what you're talking about but i think as far as looking at what's sold recently we have to look at more real-time data than going back to normal three to six months like what we always do when we're trying to find a price for your home okay i hope i calmed you guys down nothing to fear okay i know come at me right <laughs> nothing to fear. Yes, inflation is rising. Now the mortgage rates are rising. There are reasons this is happening and it's to kind of bring things back to a normal level. So have patience. And as always, if you have questions, always reach out to me. I'm happy to help you. And if you need to connect with a lender, I have several that I've worked with and they're fabulous people and they're happy to help you. And they'll help give you good information to help you make the best decision for your family. So I really hope you liked what you saw today. I have some other videos over here. I think you should check out. You want to learn more about navigating this crazy housing market. And that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching me today. I am Jackie Baker with Caldwell Banker Realty, and I will see you next time.